were the first troops to enter the large industrial and textile center. At make some year, 17 miles northeast of Lyon, the Nazis attempted to break through Allied roadblocks. They lost six tanks and two self-propelled 88s mounted on half-tracks. All were knocked out by light-armored cars, which the infantry borrowed from a tank destroyer outfit. General Patch's army draws closer to a junction with 3rd Army troops. Warp, near an important highway leading to Belfort, is occupied 4th September. The Germans retreated from the town under cover of darkness on the night before the entry of Allied forces. Quiet since reaching the Arno in July, the 5th Army front becomes active again as Allied units cross the river to advance toward the Gothic line. Here on 2nd September, after holding the southern part of Pisa for over a month, forward elements of an anti-aircraft artillery battalion cross the Arno into the northern section of the city. Heading northwest, armored vehicles roll past the historic Leaning Tower of Pisa. Lieutenant General Mark W. Clark, in command of the 5th Army, is joined by a member of his staff in an inspection of the 14th century structure which the Nazis are reported to have used as an observation post. Southeast of Pisa, on the 3rd, a British anti-aircraft unit fords the Arno. Near the Burma Road, work progresses on the Huitung Bridge. It spans the Salween River east of Tungyue, the walled citadel that fell to Chinese troops after a six-week siege. The 90-meter suspension bridge is constructed by Chinese labor under the supervision of the Burma Road engineers. One and three-eighth inch cables support the bridge. Placing the 1,000-pound floor beam. The coolies do most of the job by hand. Bolting a floor beam to the suspender cable. The bridge flooring is laid. By working both night and day, this vital link in the China-Burma route is rushed to completion. Widening the road on the eastward approach to the Huitong Bridge. A blasting crew places the dynamite. The bridge area is under spasmodic Japanese attack. After the bombing, a dud is discovered near the bridge. The 250-pound high-explosive bomb is minus the tail fin, which was knocked off on hitting the ground. Six sticks of dynamite and two charges are used to destroy the bomb. First traffic over the new Salween River Bridge. At Aitape in northeast New Guinea, infantry troops plod through wet and almost inaccessible jungles in the campaign to hold the Drinimor River lines against fanatical Japanese resistance. Aitape was invaded 22nd April, trapping 45,000 troops of the enemy's 18th Imperial Army. 
Native carriers bring much-needed supplies from the coastal sector to the fighting lines. The cargo includes vital replacements for the medics, ammunition, and other necessities. Supplies are unloaded at an infantry command post. In addition to the native carriers, C-47 cargo planes locate clearings along the jungle choke front and drop ration boxes. Itape is 150 miles southeast of Alandia. Both were taken last April. caused by Nazi bridge demolitions in France and Belgium are minimized by the immediate construction of spans by American engineers. This Ponton Bridge is typical of many spans constructed over the MERS and other water obstacles facing the American advance. Another crossing of the MERS is affected by using an old, partially demolished span as a base for a 250-foot Bailey Bridge. On 1st September, armored vehicles of General Courtney Hodge's 1st Army opened fire on the French town of Dercy in their drive toward the Belgian frontier. abandoned Nazi pillbox near Cambrai on the road to the Belgian border. St. Quentin falls to the First Army, 3rd September. South of Machen, Belgium, 2nd September. Retreating Nazis set fire to sections of the town. At 1915 hours, 2nd September, the first element of General Hodge's army crosses the Franco-Belgian border. Exploiting the breakthrough into Belgium, units of the first army attacked a retreating column of a thousand Nazi near Jamap. American tanks, mortars, half-tracks, and armored cars concentrate their fire on a wooded area 150 yards from their own advancing units. captured German captain accompanied by a party of Americans near the French border in Belgium urges his men to surrender, explaining the hopelessness of their position. Members of the rounding up party were volunteers of the First Army. <laughs> 